Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Body Meets Mind podcast. This is Paulie and Tommy. It's lovely to see you, my friend. I know it is because, uh, you know, it's lovely to see me and um, I appreciate that. <laughs> Thank you, mate. Always a pleasure uh, from my side as well. <laughs> Today we have a really special guest on the show. Her name is Elisa Caro. And uh, Elisa is a sexual engineer. She has been spending and devoting a great deal of her life in developing practices to cultivate sexual health in the individual and uh, in relationships for a long time. Elisa, welcome to the show. Oh, it's such a pleasure to be here. Thanks for having me. Very, very excited uh, to have you on the show and discuss all the incredible uh, topics that we have rattling around in the back of our brains that I'm sure you have some really colourful, incredible answers to. <laughs> yeah, let's dive deep some into these hot topics, which, you know, is often so taboo talking about sexuality. Mm. So it's a pleasure to just speak openly about it. And uh, yeah. Oh, wonderful. Well, I want to start at the 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 origins, uh, being that you are now a sexual engineer, but you were a civil engineer. And something tells me that, uh, you know, sexual empowerment and sexual um, play would not be a massively hot topic in the civil engineering world. <laughs> uh, would that be fair to say? Yeah, it would be fair. <laughs> I actually felt when I was um, working as a civil engineer and also studying, I had to shut down a bit of my, mm -hmm. you know, sexual energy and femininity moreover um, mm -hmm. to be a bit more in my masculine and... You, you know, I was surrounded by a lot of men and also in my work, I had to be quite uh, firm and spend a great deal of the time, you know, up in my brain, doing some, you know, designing and calculating things. And so, yeah, definitely have a kind of pendulate on the other side of the spectrum now and just embrace more my femininity and, um, yeah, it was just something missing when I was working as a civil engineer. And I felt mm. kind of out of my sole mission, kind of like I haven't come here to do this. That just doesn't feel my call. Mm. Mm. Take, take, take us to that time where you were working in civil engineering and you realized that there was a there was a moment where something really, really integral was missing from your life and you, you made that transition. When, when did that happen and uh, when did this awakening come in you? Yeah, so I remember kind of driving to work and feeling quite unhappy and almost like, oh, I can't do this. Like, I don't want to. And and then I was thinking, but it's a good job, you know. Um, it's like, it's a great firm, you know. I am well paid, like I'm doing what I, you know, studied like, why am I feeling like that? But there was just this deep dissatisfaction. And like, I just don't want to go there. Like to the point that I'm like, I hope I have an accident. So I don't need to go to wow. the office. That was like the moment we like, oh my God, that's not okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, and, but then I think it was also my body a little bit screaming. Like I started to have tonsillitis all the time. Like literally once. <laughs> wow. Like what is happening? Uh, and my and I started to have like a bigger cyst in my ovaries, so I felt my body as well was screaming. And you know, uh, Western medicine wanted to take out my tonsils as they were not functioning properly, uh, and also maybe have a surgery if needed on my ovaries, kind of like keep an eye on that or having contraceptive to kind of um, make sure that wouldn't get bigger. And yeah, and in that moment, it was just, I guess, the messages as well too loud. And uh, my family was is a quite open-minded. So actually my mom was like, you're not booking any surgery. You're going to visit dad. And he was living in a tantric community. Mm. Um, I tried to heal through natural remedies, give us six months. And if in these six months, nothing changed, then you might book your surgery. I think some, like I'm seeing you unhappy. I think something is not functioning in the way you're living your life. Mm, love that. that and all the rest is history because that blew my mind. And I was like, whoa. Mm. And I started to discover so many things and realizing how um, 
my sexual energy and and I thought I was having a great sex life mm. you know I thought I had like quite amazing um sex I used to you know have clitoral orgasm and quite a high sex drive but then I kind of realized how much more there was to the picture like how um you know how much more pleasure I could have tapped in mm. through learning about it and I discovered women have seven different type of orgasms and everyone can have that. And I'm like, what? I thought that women, you know, like I was just born that way. Maybe I have more nerve endings on my clitoris and that's just the way I'm wired. Um, and then I saw as well so many kind of radiant, very magnetic, you know, women. And and I felt like I want a bit of that. And mm. so they helped me understand how, you know, by kind of like channeling and harnessing that energy you can become more radiant and more empowered and and so it kind of really opened a whole new world for me and um and I decided to yeah to dive deep into it and and learn it all mm. um and actually you know I heal not through sexual practices like tantra is very big so I did a lot of like breath work and yoga um and different things but then all the sexual side as well was very enhancing so <laughs> I also <laughs> dive deep into that um and yeah I kind of like felt yeah I never looked back I was like wow this is so mind-blowing and I feel like the world is almost you know I feel like would be a better uh more in service to the planet if instead of designing houses and you know, buildings, I actually support people discover this and become mm. a bridge to uncover the potential of sexuality. Mm, brilliant. Yeah, I really love that. Um, hey, Eliza, one of the things you mentioned before in the in the beginning of your story, and I really appreciate um, you you letting uh, everyone in on that story. That was wonderful. Um, something that I would, I'd love to have you elaborate on. You said in the very beginning, working as a civil engineer, obviously being in the STEM fields, um, it's very kind of male dominated. Um, you know, you're in your brain a lot. You're, you're really having to kind of harness that masculine energy to do what you needed to do. I've noticed this a lot because um, I work as a counselor. I've noticed this a lot um, with working with some of the women that I have in, in private practice and they, they want to step into their feminine, you know, um, or more of their feminine, shall we say, as you said before, but they feel like to do that, they'll, they'll have to kind of let go and let others lead. And one of the things that I'm really interested in is that, that dichotomy of, of, of masculine and feminine leadership and feminine leadership wow. being a different way to lead, but still being a very wonderful and empowering way to lead. Is that something that you, that comes up a lot um, when you're working specifically with women who want to lead, but not from that masculine energy? Yeah. A lot of the time when there are like women in power or in a leadership position, they have been kind of taken the example from um, a more masculine perspective. And as we work together, they find their own, you know, their own way, which often might be a tiny bit less pushing, for mm -hmm. instance. Um, I'm more maybe guided by, you know, an inner knowing or some intuition or some like um, balancing as well from the mind and the body. So almost like feeling sometimes the answer in the body, what's like the next step that I have to do and really giving more space to the heart and body to speak and lead from a more integrated um yeah, integrated way within themselves. And that mm. kind of helped that not help them not feeling burnout. Um, and also having like their decision in alignment, not only with like what the mind would say is the best decision, but also what the heart feel, what the body feel. Um, and they feel a lot happier because often it's more in alignment with who they are and it's less draining. Uh, when they think they need to lead in a way that is not conducive of their personality way of being, then, you know, it, it just doesn't work that well. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. And, yeah. I, I would love to know a little bit more about how you developed and harnessed that 
uh, you know, balance in your integration between masculine and feminine femininity and how it actually was manifested through your, uh, your sexual practice and your, your study of, um, you know, Tantra, et cetera. How did that develop within yourself? And then subsequently, how have you been able to kind of teach those around you as well? Yeah. So it's a bit, uh, it's an ongoing journey for like me as well as a business owner, you know, like I don't only work with clients one-on-one or create the content. I also, you know, lead the team. That is someone that is in charge of the marketing, someone as a VA, the videographer, the editor is doing some writing and, mm. you know, probably a PR agency will come soon into the team. So, um, you know, there's much more than me doing the thing. Um, and definitely also in my own life, I need to balance, you know, the masculine skills, which I also feel very grateful that my study and my work supports me to have because I can see how they're a key part of my success. Um, not burning out, not feeling disconnected. And so having a balance of the two and kind of giving space to both of them to have an ongoing conversation. Um, and and kind of like, for instance, I realized, and I'm just going to own that. That's a bare minimum that we can build on top of that. But <laughs> two hours of self-care a day is a bare minimum. So mm. uh, that's a priority. So if, um, you know, I will have my yoga practice and meditation uh, most days, and then sometimes it's love making, sometimes it's going to dance, sometimes it's having a run, sometimes it's singing. So like self-care would look different uh, mm. for how I feel. And also everyone is different. So, you you know, I wouldn't say to everyone, you need to sing as a part of your self-care. <laughs> <laughs> you know, everyone find their own way. It's definitely part of my um, and just making sure, you know, that I carve those time into my calendar and that's a priority. And, you know, at times I would like things to be done better. Um, and I know that if I work an extra two hours, that better could be obtained, but mm. I'm giving up on my wellness. So, mm. all right, we have a launch tomorrow. Wellness is going to be put on the side for today. Mm. Uh, we don't have a launch tomorrow. Who cares? My body is as important as nice. think can be better. I'm going to drop in um, quality right now mm-hmm. uh, and, and you know, making sure that I nurture that quality within me because otherwise I know we'll get drain. Mm-hmm. So it's a bit of an ongoing conversation that is not like that I'm flexible, but uh, both parts need to have a space and need to be heard um, for that to not, you know, go into... Oh, I'm just going to take care of myself and not do anything. Yeah, uh, yes, that yes. also drivenness to not, um, you know, forget that I have a body that needs to be nurtured and a heart and an energetic body and a soul that I want to connect uh, on a daily basis. So, so yeah, giving space to both. Did that answer your question or <coughs> do you? No, no, that, no, no, that, that, that was perfect, Elisa. In fact, it, it, it was reminding me of a conversation Tommy you and I had uh maybe last week it was about perspective and um achieving goals and it's always easier with the rational mind to think about if I devote those two hours to being productive right. in a you know in a rational sense I can get more shit done but but ultimately if you take a vacation from this rational doing and really simply being and taking care of nurturing your body your mind your soul and uh then coming back to these tasks that you, you come back with a completely different perspective and and you know paradoxically you you actually get more stuff done because yeah. you have you have a fresh perspective on what you're doing yeah even like now that you're talking um spark something in me that one thing that I also support uh, my clients when you know they're like in creativity or leading position or um, I would often suggest you know as you said to utilize the power of their like sexual energy and be more in the flow um, to take less time um, to spend more time in their genius so that uh, it takes less time to get those tasks done. And for instance, like, you know, my partner flow would be like sitting and writing mm. and just get after a while it will get in the flow. I just cannot do that. 
So mm. for instance, write a blog or things like that. I would go for a hike. I would make love. I would be in the bath. I would record myself. Like I would actually move my body, move my sexual energy, and then record myself like saying something. Or I have a vision or I have an idea for a, you know, for a blog, for a um for anything, for a post, or even for an online course. And then I would have my editor like, you know, typing it up. Yeah. And kind of, nice. Yeah, and so you know, everyone is a little bit different, and really, um, also not not staying fixated in how like flow need to look like or how tasks need um task need to be done, but be in the flow. And I'm like, all right, babe, I'm gonna you know I'm gonna develop my new online course, and then you see me going out, and I was like, <laughs> and you're going to work? Yes, I am. I'm going to nature, feel nature, with my sexual energy in nature, and then all my ideas that will come from that genius. <laughs> That's so cool. That's so cool. It's so yeah. it's so important to know yourself, though, isn't it? And like know how you work and in in doing what you you want to do. It it um what I'm really interested in, Eliza, is what um what are some of the kind of the major pain points and ailments that people come to you um with, and 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 yeah, what are some of the kind of general things that you see? So from male um, bodies, often would be. I'm struggling with uh, controlling my ejaculation or, you know, and that would be sometime I come um, before, you know, um, if they're attracted to female bodies before penetration or within a minute or two, within 10 minutes. Some some people would say within 15 minutes, but that's too soon for me. So that would vary, right? Yeah. Um, some addiction with uh, pornography that have caused mm -hmm. them to lose connection with themselves and others. Or it would be um, some difficulties, anxiety of like intimacy and finding it hard mm -hmm. to have strong erection or to keep strong erection throughout the sexual experience. And this kind of like could be some of the um, pain points or sometimes when coming out of a long-term relationship, like maybe after a divorce, they are feeling, you know, the insecurity of coming out and dating again uh, after mm -hmm. maybe not even having sex for five or 10 years. Mm -hmm. um, and so kind of like feeling that insecurity of, uh, you know, do I know how to do this and want to yeah. learn new skills. Um, and so I would have two sets of clients. One could be with problems, like I just give you an example of some main uh, problem for men. And or it could be, you know, they are high achiever, they have like very successful business, very happy in their relationship. And they're like, I learn I can have 10 energy orgasm when I make love with my wife. Can I do that? I'm like, yeah, we can do that. So sometimes. <laughs> wow problem is like oh I just like I understood that there is yes. more to it um and in general they're like high achievers so they're like you know after the successful business good relationship they're like looking at other areas right mm. and so yeah, yeah. you know that's a pop up with sex and they're like I want to take it to the next level mm. like so maybe they don't have any big issue but they're like high achiever they want to have achieve high like um you know playing bigger as well in the sex realm Mm. Uh, Mayor, yeah. Sorry, no, no, you continue your thought. Uh, sorry. And then there is, um, you know, female um, would be, for instance, uh, low libido, like feeling very disconnected from their sexuality, like almost is frozen. Um, would be being the head where they make love and finding it hard to feel pleasure during sex. Um, could be even um, vaginismus and like having pain during penetration mm -hmm. then like with touch on the external part and you know or it could be um also feeling really a lot of blockages almost like if they just go through the motion you know mm -hmm. they act like a porn star or they act yeah. like they thought they should behave but that just doesn't make it for them and and they want to understand their sexuality because they don't know their bodies they you know they can have an orgasm but like they feel how it's just not really doing it for them fully mm. and and so yeah those could be some of the issue that women might be struggling with mm. uh, I, i'm really intrigued to know the way you see 
sexual energy and what how, how you really define sexual energy and how that kind of facilitates obviously the, the, the obvious question would be how that facilitates a healthy sexual relationship um uh, either with yourself or, or with your partner but also how uh, sexual energy plays its part in everyday life how it can play its part in being you know um more alive and awake in uh, work or play or sport or what you know being generally productive uh, there was a lot of questions there, but go for it. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, that's Paul's sexual energy coming out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. So um, for me, sexual energy is like a vital force that we have and that can be really um, channel and harness and supported to move through us rather than repressed. So I see how the shame uh, that is inbuilt in our society and, um, you know, we might be thinking, no, I don't think so, but I bump into this all the time. I cannot do ads. I just can't do ads because anything around sexual health is like, a no, no, no. Or um, even like a simple payment gate, Stripe was like, I'm sorry, but due to the content of your online courses we do not want to support your business oh and my god it. and there is no naked like no nudity in my courses no way. it's like i'm simply talking about sexual topic and it's like no way stripe oh is god. not That's unbelievable. yeah so like you know even if we we want to say no it's not there it's there like to mm. the point that you know a normal payment gate we never do any problem with other industry what? but sexual education is like out of there um <sighs> you know, things. So there is like this embedded shame mm -hmm. uh, and taboo and secretiveness. And these really block our sexual energy and keep it a little bit trapped. And that could look like um, it can get like a bit more compulsive. And here there are, you know, uh, sometimes um, men would feel like all this build up and do not know how to process it. And because um, you know, it feels like they need to push it down, then it will come with that compulsiveness. Mm -hmm. And maybe that's why they might watch, you know, um, uh, porn in a compulsive way to release stress or things like that in a way that, you know, doesn't feel really, uh, really good for them, not that expensive. Um, and sometimes it can get a bit frozen and then we feel disconnected from that, like, energy within us. Um, but when we allow that uh, chi, that prana, that vital force to run through us, um, it can really enhance our pleasure. And, you know, before I mentioned, for instance, uh, you know, a high achiever that will say, I want to have 10 energy orgs in a while and make love with my wife. It's like, <laughs> cool, let's do that. You know, let's mm -hmm. learn, let's help you understand how to have energy organs. So, like, we, it can enhance our. Um, our sex life and our pleasure and as you were mentioning earlier it can also be in support of our everyday life so let me give you some examples so when you know um, a artist or someone that needs to work with their creativity if you um, let that sexual energy move through you like the example I was giving to you earlier it supports the creativity because it's also our create like a creative force creative energy and also how it works in the brain is that it's kind of shut down the part of the brain that is more judgmental mm -hmm. and like open up a different kind of like connection um in the brain so a little bit like psychedelic of course like in less intensity but um that's how it's activating the brain. Mm -hmm. uh, that's why if you try to do math when you're highly aroused, it's a bit harder because that just that part of the brain gets a bit shut down. So you need to think a bit like more, you know, but if you think of like creative stuff or new ideas can pop up much more if you let that energy flow through you. So mm. that's what's, you know, happening in the brain. Um, and so let's imagine that the artist, when it feels blocked, moving that sexual energy, making love with themselves or with their partner, or even dancing and breathing and letting that sexual energy move and then going and do their magic would be easier. Mm. Um, 
if, you know, like so many of my clients really struggle to speak up and as they learn how to speak up in the bedroom, you know, naked and so exposed, they learn how to speak up with their boss and ask for the pay raise they wanted. Mm-hmm. And so yeah, cool. like uh, they're harnessing, you know, that, that like power uh, when someone <clears throat> like a lot sexier, you know, there is a sense of like more confidence that come with it. And so mm. it's just how you walk in, you know, your everyday life. Like sometime I had some women coming and say, you know, I, I wanted to work with you because of how you walk around. There's like such this like um, kind of like relaxation about it, but also kind of confidence yep. uh, that is so, you know, appealing to me because I want that. Mm. And, and, you know, it really, yeah, it really doesn't end there because even if you want to have more energy, like for instance, for male bodies, when, when they have a, ejaculation when they do ejaculate there is a bit of sexual energy that leaves their body so you know you feel a bit more tired and so if you learn how to let that energy circulate and not necessarily all the time like ejaculate or have a clitoral orgasm for women then you will also have more energy for your day to day Mm. and so it's really like so so supportive and i personally also really like to use it as therapy so in the midst of it, in the like peak of my orgasm, that's often when I process things. And like, you know, you can use psychedelic if you have that like intention of channeling that energy for that reason, that could be also used for healing. And when I work Mm. with uh, clients, I often tell them when I give uh, a tantric massage, which is full body massage, including as well the genital, if they're open to receive that, what like they're looking for, um, you know, that things might come up like old trauma, things might come up because we are moving sexual energy as well for the healing. So what is in between my pop out for being healed. And so it can be also yeah. used as a spiritual practice and as a healing practice. So sexual energy really can be a magical tool that we is underestimate. And of course, the first step is unlocking it. So if it's a bit like repressed or not fully harnessed, then the first step is like learning how to let it move through you fully and mm. then you know, the second step you kind of can harness and channel that energy in the direction most helpful for you mm, that's so cool so I, yeah so i've got loads of questions at the moment um okay. this is this is it's so interesting so so before you were talking about how um for men um looking at porn compulsively or or whatever it is is kind of like akin to not being able to deal with that energy. So they kind of let it out. It kind of speaks, I've said to you before that I can um, speak French, petit mot in, in, in French is little death. Um, sorry, my computer's doing weird things. So that's interesting. You just kind of like, it almost to me, based on what you were saying before, speaks to this kind of quick shutdown that, that you can get from ejaculation. When you're, when you're working with men and they're looking to um, perhaps be able to kind of contain or hold space for that energy without um, releasing it metaphorically and literally, what are, what are some of the practices that you, you give them? Yeah. So it would be to reduce the number of ejaculation and to let energy flow through them because otherwise if it stays stuck, then it creates frustration, it creates compulsive thinking. So they need to move it. Mm. And so the person would will learn how to move it. Otherwise, if they just like stop uh, ejaculating, that would feel like a bit of a pressure there that I don't know how to handle. Mm. One of the best practices to do that um, is to self pleasure, so to um, masturbate, but do it in a conscious way. And it would be like while moving energy upwards. And there are a lot of ways that we can do that. I might share like one or two uh, tools so that yeah, yeah. people you know are listening to this that can just start in practicing already. Um, And it would be to use the breath. So breathing deeply, often when we um, sell pleasure, we tend to hold the breath or do it more shallow. So breathing quite deeply as they do sell pleasure, uh, making sound on the exhale and uh, moving their bodies as well. So not kind of like hunching or contracting part of their bodies, but having like the body relax and move Mm. uh, as they sell pleasure. So that could look Mm. like breathing, sound, uh, movement, 
Oh. oh, and when I feel like the energy of almost, uh, you know, uh, wanted to come is there, like slowing the um, the touch and and trying to breathe that energy up. They can even like imaging it, like they're pulling it up and moving it through the body. So mm -hmm. almost like they want to really bring that sexual energy through the heart and through the throat or to the top of the head, but at least until the heart. Um, and so do extended self pleasure while moving sexual energy. So instead of doing five, 10, uh, 15 minutes, I usually would say, you know, double it to start with and then keep doubling it. Um, and or you know 20 30 40 minutes that's great and not always ejaculate but find a good rhythm usually would say ejaculate alpha what you used to that's like a great starting point so cool, one cool. time ejaculate one time you don't mm. uh, because just stopping it's going to be you know too intense and also i don't think it's that beneficial to stop it necessarily but I think the best would be to not overly do it and just keep that more energy in, which also will allow to have, you know, higher sex drive and strong, stronger sexual um, energy and stronger erection too. Like so many mm -hmm. men, sometimes men would come, you know, in the sixties mm -hmm. and they have problem with having not a strong erection and often they're just ejaculating too much. Mm -hmm. like they're just ejaculating as they used to do in their 30s but they have less energy they can't run the marathon they were running when they were 30s but they want to do the same number of ejaculation and that doesn't work so yep. you know Old so that will, <laughs> <laughs> that will change as well like throughout life and mm. i never saw anyone in tantra that had problem with direction in their 60s 70s or anything like that unless there is like some medical complication of course uh, that's like a different story but that would have a very strong erection because it would just reduce the number of ejaculation. Uh, and of course, they're quite connected with their bodies, so living a healthy lifestyle. And so that would still be, you know, very strong. Yeah. yeah. So, so for those men that do kind of grow up with that kind of, their, their self, I suppose, um, they feel that this need to ejaculate regularly and often um what, what i mean I, i'm supposing it's different for for everybody but is there are there commonalities that you see amongst those men and why that kind of expression um needs to manifest with them through this regular ejaculation so i would say that most of the people that feel like they need to ejaculate is because their energy is not flowing mm have a lot of sexual energy but it's not flowing through their body so they feel like it's building up so they need to let it out so as soon as they will learn how to make it flow um then they will you know um feel less of that like attachment but mm. you know i i wouldn't say like as a bold rule oh men should ejaculate once a week or once every month or once a day as I said, like telling someone to ejaculate alpha, what they usually do is a great starting point. So even the same age, you know, someone could usually ejaculate twice a day and some people would ejaculate once a week, even, mm -hmm. you know, let's say someone in their thirties or even once a month. So we kind of like just, just tell them to start to reduce it. That would be it. And if they cannot, if they have like a strong attachment, I would say is mainly because the energy is stuck. So mm -hmm. it's to build up. They just need to let it out. And so it's about letting that move through them. Mm, that recirculation. So there might be some time a pattern, which is a coping mechanism to ejaculate and is for stress release. Fascinating. And uh, yeah. Go for it, Tommy. Yeah, no, it is really interesting. Um, and you can you know, one thing this is kind of really showing me speaking with you is um, you know, just you know, even back to what you were talking about with Stripe and Stripe, I mean, what you're doing is just un, like obviously so positive and needed in this world, you know, but when it's shoved down, people seek in this example, sexual education elsewhere, which inevitably comes from porn. And it gives us a very, very male dominated yet superficial, because I'm not saying there's anything wrong with having the male perspective, but it's like only one side of the coin. 
And if it's just that side dominated, what is it? It's just, it's so means to ends, you know, in the mind, quick, 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 change position. There's no feel into it. You don't get to feel the emotion from a video that, 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 that is so edited, you know, and, and, and obviously, um, aesthetic, you know, um, and it, it, it speaks to kind of some of the pain points you were mentioning about the women, you know, that you, that you work with, they've just, they don't feel like they really want to have sex. Well, is it that they don't really want to have sex or is it that the way that, that we've all been raised to believing what sex is, isn't what feels right for them? Yeah. I would say that that's most likely what's happening. Like they have been trying to fit into standard that is not conducive of their pleasure and as a result, they, you know, they feel a bit frozen inside because that mm. is not satisfying. And mm. maybe when they were a bit younger, there was like, you know, a very strong impulse, but that, you know, very throughout our life uh, and is a normal part of life. Like you feel different from when you were a teenager and, and, you know, and then they just shut down that part of themselves. But often, you know, when I see... Sometime I would have some women in their 40 or 50 and they come to me, they're like, oh my God, I just recently divorced. And then I met this lover and it just literally blew my mind. Uh, <laughs> I'm finding myself wanting sex every day where I didn't want to have sex at all. And I'm feeling right. a bit confused and I'm just remitting this part of myself. And can you help me understand? Wow. And, you know, because um, it was just, yeah, they were not receiving what they needed. And mm. then, you know, uh, they finally receive it and they feel a bit confused because, of course, they were not empowering that part of themselves. So it was so dependent on how they were treated rather they could speak up because they never learned how to speak up. They never learned uh, what would work for them. They just try to fit into standard and not listening to their body and what they need. And really, I would say that the key for um, a more pleasurable sex life and um, with higher satisfaction is a holistic approach. So kind of like thinking not only from the physical perspective, but having, you know, Tantra is this beautiful framework. So I might just share that of yeah. the five tantric bodies. So when you make love, you want to involve as much as you can of those bodies. So there is the physical and pleasure in the physical could be, you know, like contraction, sounds, moaning. Then there is the mental uh, and mental um, pleasure in the mental body could be felt in different ways like it could be either fantasizing and like you know disconnect mm. the body and go into fantasy or you can even uh, perceive pleasure just being totally in the moment just like clear mind and total mm. focus is so disruptive when the mind is like going all over the place so when mm. we can have that like clarity and spaciousness it feels very pleasurable and then the third body is the emotional body and when pleasure hits the emotional body we feel a deeper sense of connection Mm. A sense of safety, being able to let go, um, and almost like life is a bit more magical. Like sometimes, you know, um, we can have a very expensive love making, and we come out and we feel like just like the color are brighter, and mm. so like, that sense of openness in the heart. And then the fourth one is the energetic body, and it comes into place when we want to control ejaculation. For instance, one of the main things is moving sexual energy. Um, and by the way, just if there is any man listening to this, controlling ejaculation is one of the easiest thing to do, like, for instance, in my practice or for any tantric practitioner, uh, and often get achieved between, you know, one session to a few months. So if you're struggling with that, just knowing there is an answer for that. Um, cool. So going back to the energy moving. So the energy moving, um, yeah, could add like layers, you know, of pleasure and could be felt as tingling, as warmth as electricity or sweeping sensation. And then there is the fifth body, which for some people would not resonate. And that's totally fine. You can get to so much pleasure without it, is the spiritual body. So right. if someone is into spirituality and the connection with their soul is a big part of you know their life, um, they don't need to separate that from their sexual experience. Mm -hmm. Like sacredness and sex, can be lived at the same time um and you know it's a beautiful spiritual practice for me making love in a very conscious way and connect with my soul as i do that and so at least the four, main four um and then the fifth for anyone who resonates with it so there is the physical mm -hmm. the mental the um emotional 
the energetic and the spiritual. So, uh, well, I've got a couple of questions uh, about this box that you've just opened up here. So <laughs> there, there are these five, there are these five uh, things that you've talked about. You know, obviously we live. Many of us live in a very physical world, so that is something that we can all relate to on, uh, you know, on a very tangible level. But um, unlocking the doors behind all of these other elements, um, can you take us through some of the practices and guidance that you uh, give to some couples and individuals to be able to unlock, say, uh, the more mental side of things or, or, or the spiritual side of things? because there are obviously mental blockages that, that people have. And then once you add that into something as powerful as uh, the bedroom, it can be, um, it can be a lot of, you know, barriers placed up uh, uh, mentally as well. Yeah. Yeah, of course. So it's a bit, uh, it could, you know, just happen overnight. And it's also a journey that sometime is going to take more time, but I'm going to give you some tips into how, to bring more of those bodies in someone love making. So the um, physical one, it's the more obvious one. So we are gonna go with the with the other one. So the mental one, just like simply even training the mind. So you know how in meditation sometimes we at the beginning train the mind into um come back to presence or come back to a visualization or come back to a practice. And then doing it over and over again is kind of like strengthening that muscle and then become easier and easier and easier to have that awareness. So you can do the same as well with, with sex. So you can literally, just like it's a simple thing, anytime you realize your mind wonder, bring it back. Mm. And people sometimes just spend time, oh, is what is my partner thinking? Or they're having a good time. Or, or maybe I should change position. Uh, or women might, might wonder, how does my body look from this angle? Um, mm. And... Um, you know, oh, maybe my pussy tastes bad. Mm. Uh, I hope my pussy tastes all right. And so like <laughs> I dwell in those thoughts, thinking they're not a big deal, but they're bringing us out of the moment. So yeah. like having as an intention when we start the self-pleasure, the lovemaking, to not spend time in fantasies as much as we can, to not spend time in thinking of stuff and really all the time coming back to presence, coming back to presence, coming mm. back to presence and strengthening that muscle. There are more things that can be done, but, you know, as a like quick tip right now here, uh, so they have space as well to to the other one, uh, it's a good one. So it's uh, one like, good, you know, start with. For, for people who, where even meditation is something that they haven't really explored that much of, I'm going to kind of dig a little, little bit deeper. When you say coming back to presence, can right. you, so you give can, us more guidance? Yeah, so you can use three anchor. So you can come back to the sensation of the body. So feeling what your body is perceiving, you know, and that could be pleasure. If it's not pleasure, even the bed underneath you or the body of your partner um, underneath you or on you or, you know, just the sensations, just sensation of the body. So you notice you're thinking about your boss or so what you need to do next. So what your partner might be thinking and simply like, all right, just bring back the mind. How is my body feeling right now? And just doing it over and over again without so much judgment, but just simply come back. Uh, another anchor could be the breath. So simply take a deep breath in and feel the air coming in and out. So that could be an anchor to the moment. Um, and another anchor could be look in your partner eye. So that as well could support you come back to presence um and mm. you know be in the moment just meet in their eye if you are making love with someone else that is open to have that eye gaze so that's why i'm giving trees so that people can see what <clears throat> best for them mm. uh and you know and go from one to the other or use mainly one depending on what would be supportive that's great yeah, that is really cool um it's interesting I've, I've, i'm i'm fascinated now about this um this mode of uh using the mental side, the mental body. Um, what was the phrase you used? Sorry, Eliza, the mental. Yeah. Mental body is great. Mental yes. body, mental body. Yeah. Cool. Cause I've often wondered, um, I remember reading a, um, reading a, a book about how, um, there was a, there was a couple of people that just 
collated all this data about um, the kind of porn that, that men and women look up. And, you can, you know, for, for men, it's relatively obvious. It's very physical. It's very aesthetic. But then with the women, it was not only grounded in erotica and storytelling, but it often involved vampires, doctors, um, billionaires. You know, it's kind of like that. And it speaks to that kind of um, dark. So this is obviously, you know, from the heterosexual stance, but a, a, a dark harnessed aspect of of a man you know someone who is powerful but has that integrated so they don't lose control of that um you can just you know obviously a vampire something like that and then it got me thinking about 50 shades of gray and why that was so such a big book and so forth but what what it sounds like what you're speaking to there is that fantasy can almost act as a detriment when you're having sex with someone because it's taking you out of the present moment so what what is going on in terms of the feminine or the female side with with as to why erotica and storytelling is so alluring and then how can that aid them in their relational sexual practice if it does um can you repeat the question i think yeah. like i got the first bit but then like the last bit what you want what like the sure actual- so i um i I'm kind of like thinking as I'm going here. So I, to, to, yeah, so I don't really know what I'm asking. <laughs> why? Let's we'll start with a more basic question. Why is um, erotic novels? Why are they so big for feminine sexuality? Yeah, I think like that. You know, um, like a more holistic approach really works well for women as um to really activate fully their pussy it's kind of like energetically for the taoist tradition that like energy need to flow through their heart Mm. uh, and then going as well to the unit so it's kind of like going like that and for the taoist tradition for the male perspective is going from the genitals all the way up so Mm. almost like if you know i mean we're really like it's a bit stiff. It's not always like, you know, that, but the masculine arousal start from the genitals and moves through the body. And the feminine arousal would like mm. be be better if it's like go through, you know, connection, the mind, the heart, and then it really sets the pussy on fire. Mm. And so I would say, you know, that the story is like taking more side of the picture in that. Mm. Um, and so it will um, activate their sexuality more that makes and sense. you know when both parties um so let's imagine that even not necessarily like as a heterosexual you know couple but often there is like that attraction with one that has like a feminine arousal and one that has like a more masculine arousal and so when both like they they often attract each other and when they both connect on multiple level, then the pleasure they feel is higher anyway. Mm. So it's not like, or you know, the like the you know the porn example that you were giving is the most pleasurable things for men. Like you know, when they do find like tantra and connect their heart, connect their mind, connect their purpose, feel their sexual energy moving through them, the pleasure they can feel is a lot. Mm. Uh, yeah, like bigger. So uh, it's almost like, but uh, for the female body it's hard to just kind of like activate that like that yeah. more of maybe for the clitoral stimulation, but not for like a cervical orgasm. You know how at the beginning I said that every woman can have a different type of orgasm. Mm. So every woman can have a cervical orgasm, but it's going to be hard to have that approach to sex and get there. Right. Right. So, you know, even like, for instance, the cervix is connected with a part of the brain that is very emotional. Um, and if, the female body who is experiencing touch in their cervix is has like the emotional side shut down, then they're shutting down the pleasure, you mm. know, they influence each other. So as they receive pleasure through the cervix, that part of the brain wants to open up. But if they're also that part of the brain feel like really shut down and they feel contracted and distanced from their emotion, they're also blocking the pleasure. Mm. So, you know, when someone wants to learn how to have a cervical orgasm, I'm like, great, great. Let's start with bringing your heart into sexual experience. Let's mm. start to, you know, help you become more aware of your energetic body. Uh, and then it will be easy for you to have a cervical orgasm. So we need to kind of like go through that to um, to unlock it. Mm. Is that answer your question? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Paul, you can't help but feel resentful that 
we didn't learn any of this at school. Hey, you just learned. Well, it's this is this is a mandatory part of uh, secondary school education, I would say. Uh, Absolutely. All we get is what is a vagina? What is a penis? You know, it doesn't really go beyond. Well, I feel like a lot of schools have kind of uh, put put up the barriers in, in front of like female like genitalia representation. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but I, I'm really keen to, and and I'm I just want to I'm aware of the time, but I'm also really keen to explore the other aspects of tantra. And please let us know if you need to run, um, Eliza, as well. No, no, I'm, I'm, I'm fine. I'm glad that um, you, you really like this, and I'm yeah, always happy to come back as well. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and we can, you know, dive deep into some, you know, aspect another time as well, more in depth. But yeah, uh, please, um, yeah, do the question. What would you like to know? So they like uh, how to bring more of the heart in it because we stop at the mental. Or I was going to touch on just the other. Like I, I, I'm keen in just exploring the um, the foundational principles of uh, tantra. Uh, being the physical, the mental, um, maybe we can just touch on a, a couple of others yeah. if possible. Uh, unless you wanted to uh, go down any path, Tommy. No, no, that's no, no. I'm keen to I'm keen to follow along. Right. So we did. Um, I give a tip for the mental body earlier with the three anchor of breath, uh, eye gazing, and sensation of the body. Now let's see how to bring more of the emotional body in the experience. Mm-hmm. So. For this one, I, I I'm gonna give another like few tips, and so someone can do what resonates the most. So they can simply do some self compassion before um, masturbating consciously, or um, say loving things to their partner, and receive sorry, <laughs> and receive as well um, that kind of love. From their partner so even just speaking those loving things and receiving them will support kind of like starting opening their heart more mm-hmm. and then in the midst of that arousal saying as well loving things and compassionate things to yourself which mm-hmm. to say those compassionate things you need to activate your heart and so mean it as you say them mm-hmm. so for instance yep. that could be you know if i'm making love with myself like that I love myself and I accept myself and it's okay if I do mistake and it's a normal part of being a human and I release myself from any need of being perfect that I'm perfect as I am. So mm-hmm. this is an example of like self-compassion and I might do it beforehand. You know, and I had to close my eyes to just drop into my heart to, mm-hmm. you know, to let my heart speak. Uh, And then as I make love with myself, I will say, you know, like, I love myself and I, I, I want to give to myself and I accept myself as I am. So as I'm aroused, I'm saying things that need to activate my heart to be said. Mm. And if you are with a partner, like, I love you, like, you're so special to me. You know, I, um, it's an honor to be making love with you. Mm. And you can say also those things, you know. Like, it doesn't need to be the love of your life. Like, you know, I really care about you. Like, you're a wonderful woman. You're a wonderful man. Uh, it's an honor to be in this intimate space with you. Like, those things can be said without the other person need to be the person of your life. Mm. Um, so this one, like, you know, advice. Another one could be if someone is really visual, to literally visualize they are like a light from their heart, like expanding or the light, like the energy from their genitals connecting to, uh, to their heart. So kind of like visually is literally like visualizing the energy coming in and open up and seeing their like heart shining. Mm. Uh, if someone is really visual or has done a lot of, you know, visualization in their meditation that might support or like feel them, uh, the visualization between your heart and your partner heart when you make love. Mm. So just feel that connection, like imagine like a beam of light connecting you with their with their heart. Mm. Um, and another one when you're making love with someone else is l- looking in their eyes and see the human like in front of you, not a piece of meat, not a, like a human, you know, <laughs> like yeah. their heart, their whole side, like feeling them. So those are three things that, you know, someone can do that 
can be supportive of bringing more of their heart. Amazing. I love that. Sexual experience. I can, I can imagine that um, just looking into someone's eyes might be really tough for people. Is that, can you, can you speak to that? Can you tell us why? Yeah, well, it's very exposing. So I feel like through the eyes, it almost feel like they can really look inside. And, um, and sometimes it's scary to be seen yeah. fully. Mm. And, um, and, you know, at times has been maybe unsafe in their life to, to be seen. And so that brings up that uh, sense of unsafety. Um, and so it could be really hard for some people. And um, I often, you know, get couple or people to look in their eyes in the mirror or to look in each other's eyes and say loving things to one another. And if it's really hard for someone, I would take like breaks of like closing the eyes when you feel safe again, open, and then just supporting them, feeling safe, like you're safe, you're safe to open, it's safe to be seen. Mm. Like, you know, and then the partner like saying something loving and then they close their eyes. So slowly opening, not kind of like abruptly coming in like a kamikaze, but just like slowly stretching. Look at me. <laughs> yes. yes. I, I, I've participated in workshops in the past uh, where uh, w- without the sexual aspect, but just uh, <laughs> being like part of the, the facilitation of it was simply just gazing into each other's eyes and getting into partners and uh, being able to do that. And there's something incredibly confronting at the beginning of the process and then incredibly disarming. And you see yourself in the person uh, eventually. And there's an eventuation where if you hold that linger for long enough, you really are just the same person. Um, And there's similarities in this uh, um, connection that, that unveils as a result of that is truly magical. It's pretty, pretty remarkable. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's very, very powerful. And, uh, in, you know, in the workshop, when I do it or in my one-on-one, I often see that, yeah, people would cry or feel very emotional and be very touched by looking mm. their eyes in the mirror. <laughs> mm into someone else's eyes as well you know with the guidance of like you know it's safe to be seen just let yourself be seen fully and just kind of like um helping them peeling those layers and you know and feeling that connection so it's Mm. and you know tidying that with with the bodies i think is one of the most powerful way to bring the spiritual body in Mm. need to um look in someone else's eyes and try to feel their soul and you know as you were mentioning earlier kind of like feeling out how you are one with the same person and, mm. and being in that way like that gaze into yeah into the love making mm. and you know it's kind of like the difference from you know sitting around and meditation it's almost like where you put your awareness right so you can sit around and just like all right and then you know the, the difference of someone meditating is like where they're putting their awareness so like it might not look different when you have soul sex, but um, that awareness as you look into your eye, in you know the other person's eye is in seeing their soul, and you're being touched on a deep level. Mm. And so, um, yeah. And my really support, for instance, like when you know when I do meditation retreat um, with my partner, we will have a, you know an hour or two of love making a day, and uh, that will be in the schedule. And it will be <laughs> part <supportive> of <laughs> our spiritual practice, as well as um, is really a great way to have soul sex because we spend so much time meditating and connecting with our soul, and then we bring the depth in the love making. That's been one of the most touching love making we have done sometime in yeah in meditation retreat in the midst of it. Mm, yeah, I love that. Well, look. Eliza, we're, we're very conscious of, of the time. Um, we we would absolutely love to have you back on the show myriad times as we continue this endeavor. Um, and um, and we very much look forward to it. Yeah, for sure. I just want to, I, I was um, hoping to ask you a, a final question just to kind of round things off. For, for anyone really new to Tantra, sexual energy, just any of the concepts that we've discussed today, um, what's like one piece of advice um, that, that you could give them just as they're, they're opening their journey? 
Yeah, so it would be to try to, as much as they can, let go of preconceived idea how sex look like and explore how sex look like for them. So, mm -hmm. you know, try to let go of, oh, I need to look a certain way, penetration must be involved. And just start asking, what do I want? What do I like? What feel good to do next? So just simply understanding a bit more their sexuality by, with a curiosity, start to um, look, you know, within. Mm, love that. That's fantastic. Oh, hey, okay. where, can, where can people find you? What, what's coming up for you on the horizon? Um, I think one of the best way of finding me, probably just check out my YouTube channel. There's so many videos on like what's Tantra, how to unlock cervical orgasm, learn how to squirt. So they're like, <laughs> there are a lot of um, amazing topic. And if they just type Elisa Caro, like E-L-I-S-A-C-A-R-O on YouTube, they will find me. Brilliant. Brilliant. Then from there, they can find my Instagram, they can find my website, they can see my offerings. Uh, and I can receive a lot of value because I feel like my YouTube is like. Brilliant. Um, I'll be signing up. Same. <laughs> <laughs> it's awesome. uh, I can't wait to learn how to squirt. <laughs> I was just about to make a joke about that. I can't wait to have a cervical <laughs> orgasm. <laughs> Thank you so much for your time, Eliza. It's been uh, so wonderful and uh, uh, can't wait to have you back on the show. Mm. That's that sounds great. Can't wait to be back. Thanks for having me. Thank you. Beautiful. Catch you later, guys.